Yo, what up guys? I'm Sammy. Welcome back to the So Brothers channel. Today we're going to be doing a Does It Still Basketball with the LeBron 7s. So if you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. But this shoe is going for 200 bucks, I believe. Same price as the LeBron 17, which is kind of crazy because this shoe is 10 years older. This is 10 years ago. So obviously, it does basketball, right? But does it still basketball? Comparing it to a shoe... You know, that's 10 years after this shoe was designed. Uh, did the technology improve? So we're going to be finding that out in this video. Let's get it started off with the traction. So the traction on LeBron 7, surprising. It's very, very nice. On the clean court, it has a good stop. I wouldn't say it's the hardest stop I've ever experienced, but it's a nice, good stop. And it picks up absolutely no dust. In the middle of the shoe, it's slightly translucent. And I guess around the perimeter of the shoe, it's more of a solid rubber. But it doesn't really matter because like, I had no issues on dust. and didn't pick up any dust. I didn't need a wipe really ever. And as far as durability goes, durability, I have a little bit of frame. Especially here where the nubs are. Like the very, very thin and fine herringbone pattern. But I would still say it's okay to play outdoors in this shoe. So surprising on the LeBron 7, the traction is really, really good. And also this shoe has absolutely no squeak. That's kind of a bummer because I like to have a little bit of a squeak. But you know, squeak doesn't determine the performance of the shoe. Alright, moving on to the heel to toe transition. The heel to toe transition on this shoe wasn't horrible. It wasn't as bad as like the Jordan 12s or you know like old school Jordans, but it's, it would, still wasn't very good. Especially comparing it to LeBron 17. Like with this type of setup, uh, as you guys can see, it's articulated in the forefoot. Because you know in your foot, that's where your foot moves, right? So you want a little bit of flex in the forefoot or else it's gonna feel very stiff and not fluid at all. And with this full length Air Max unit, it doesn't allow for any type of flex, especially in the forefoot. You can't, you can't bend this. It's literally just plastic and uh, they made it super thick so you can't really flex it at all. One thing that does help is this curved shape and also the Air Max unit just in the heel, it's just on the edges of the cushion, it compresses. So the, the heel feels pretty nice, you know, it's not super clunky or anything. But once you get into the forefoot, there is a little bit of a forefoot curvature, which does help. It's pretty flat compared to other shoes, like, like look at this. Like it goes up a lot more, it's curved up a little bit more. This is a little bit more flat. So uh, like I felt a lot more flat footed when I was playing this. You know, for example, like in the 16s where the cushion really, really protrudes out. So it allows for a lot more, I guess, rocking in the forefoot, which helped you feel more on your toes. The LeBron 7, you don't really feel that at all. So heel to toe transition, definitely not as bad as some other shoes that I've tried, but it's not very nice. And to me personally, heel to toe transition is very important. I like to have a very fluid heel to toe transition. So uh, I didn't really like it too much in this. Moving on to the cushion setup. The cushion setup is full length Air Max. And as you guys know, I don't like Air Max too much, especially for basketball. And yeah, I mean, if you're just landing like this, there's absolutely no compression in the Air Max, you know? Uh, it's more on the edges. And uh, you have these pillars that, you, uh, that I didn't notice at first, but you can see the actual pillar or the Air Max unit underneath this translucent outsole, like in the middle, which is kind of cool, but that's, that's where the actual Air Max is. And it doesn't compress. It's not like a spring or anything. Uh, it's literally just plastic and like I said, you can only feel a little bit of compression on the edges and they make it pretty like the, the thickest part of this Air Max cushion is here on the heel on the lateral side. So if you kind of go like this, you can feel a little bit of a rocking motion. It's not the most stable either. I mean like cord feel is not very good. It's actually pretty bad. There's a lot of compression but only like on the edges and you can only feel the Air Max cushion kind of when you go like this. Like really really try to feel it and dig the shoe into the ground. But when you're like running, when you're just you know playing, you can't really feel the Air Max cushion that much. So yeah, I mean definitely this is way better with the zoom and this is way better as well. Moving on to the materials. So in the toe area you have a lot and a lot of leather but surprisingly it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be you know as far as like it feeling a little bulky and a little bit cumbersome. Uh, it's actually pretty damn soft. It conforms to your foot really well. I didn't really need to break it in all that much. Like it never, it was never super stiff or anything. But obviously it is a little bit thicker than the battle knit. But I actually didn't mind it. And then here on the lateral medial side, you have a fused material, which is super thin. You can literally see my finger through this fused material with the fly wire. And also in the ankle area, there's not actually no padding besides this Achilles piece. And I don't know what this is called. It's not really an Achilles pillow, but I guess it kind of is. And the materials actually weren't that bad. I would say I would have liked it to be a little bit thinner, 
But you know, with leather, you can't really do that. So yeah, I mean, I actually enjoyed the materials. Moving on to the fit. The fit, I went true to size. Width-wise, I would say it's around normal. Maybe even a touch wide. And surprising, there wasn't a lot of dead space in the toe area. Like with shoes like this, sometimes there's a lot of dead space. But for me, in the LeBron 7, it fit my foot pretty well. It was a snug fit, easy to put on. The tongue is attached to a material that goes underneath the skew's upper. So you have a better one-to-one -one fit and the, the tongue doesn't slide around. If you have a wide foot, I would probably suggest going up half the size. Uh, moving on to the support and lockdown. Support and lockdown was pretty good. As far as ankle support goes, it, it kind, it's kind of a mid, I would say, mid-high. And ankle support was pretty good. I wouldn't say it's incredible, but um, it's just, it's something on your ankle. And of course, lateral containment, lateral support was very good. You're not your foot is not going anywhere with this leather material. So my foot was held in for lateral movements. Like the shoe didn't feel very laterally stable. Just here in the heel. I mean, I understand that on the medial side. The medial side is okay because you're not gonna roll your ankle like like this, right? You're more prone to rolling your ankle like this. So you don't really want a lot of you know, compression on this side. So that's why a lot of designers, a lot of companies cage this part up. In this shoe, this is actually the thickest part of the cushion setup, you know, in the Air Max unit. So I felt a little unstable in it. Not like crazy, cause you really have to like be on the side and on the edge for the Air Max to compress. But I didn't feel 100% stable and you are high up off the ground. So that doesn't help either. Uh, moving on to the weight, to the weight of this shoe, let's see, uh, the, an old school shoe versus a new school shoe, I, I'm kind of curious, 15.41 ounces, that's pretty damn heavy, yeah, they're, they're basically the same, 15.56 for the 16s, and the 17s probably 15, 15.84, so all around the same exact weight, so <laughs> uh, I guess LeBron just doesn't care. You know, he just wants a very supportive shoe and you know, he's a big dude. This shoe feels pretty damn heavy. Feels a little like pretty damn stiff. It's, it's not very fluid. Um, like I, I was playing in my PG4s and then I switched to this and I switched back to the PG4s. I was like, yo, <laughs> it's not very fluid to play, you know? As far as ventilation goes, obviously with this leather material, your foot's gonna be very hot. Durability seems like it's this shoe's gonna last a long, long time. I mean, besides the traction, I guess the, the small herringbone parts ripping off if you're playing outdoors. I mean, this shoe is probably gonna last you a very long time, especially with this upper. Aesthetics, I mean, I kinda, I kinda like how these look. They grew on me, and uh, I love how Air Max looks. It's a cool looking shoe in my opinion. You can definitely rock it off court if you would like to. So tell us your thoughts on the aesthetics down in the comment section below. So yeah, does it still basketball? I mean, to be honest, I wasn't expecting much. Uh, I was like, eh, you know, I don't think it's gonna perform very well, but I mean, I was pretty surprised. The traction is really nice. The upper wasn't as thick or cumbersome as I thought it was gonna be. The cushion, is something that I would 100% change. I mean, at least segmented here in the forefoot like they do in, in the 16 and the 17, that's why they do it so you have more flex, you know? Like, look at that, compared to this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like also, for example, they did that in the LeBron 10 with the full length zoom unit, which is super bouncy, it's very, very nice, but you also, you can't bend this at all, so. You know, I mean, you can definitely play basketball in it. And like I said, I was surprised at how much I liked it compared to like, which I thought I wasn't going to like it. But does it perform anywhere close to the 16 and the 17? Not really, I mean, with today's technology, the battle knit feels better, softer, a lot more comfortable and cozy. With the same amount of support, I would say, the cushion is way better, a lot more fluid as well. Traction's still really good. So yeah, comparing it to, you know, modern technology and modern shoes, the LeBron 7 doesn't really compare too much, but you can definitely still basketball in it. So if you would like, you can definitely do it. So yeah. For 200 bucks, if you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. But that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next one.